thank you very much. My guests are seated, and we get into the vexed matters right away. Now, I am excited to be joined by Abdul Malik Kwekubaku Jr., who is editor in chief of the New Crusading Guide. Uh, Abdul Malik Kwekubaku, not Jr. Thank you very much, sir. I'm always <laughs> reminded of that. Who is the editor in chief of the New Crusading Guide newspaper and our regular panelist. Dr. Clementa Park is presidential staffer who I have discovered is, is, is doing stuff to become an MP uh, somewhere in, uh, I'll tell you quite shortly. Good morning and welcome. Gabi Asari Otri Dako is an investment consultant, policy and political risk analyst. Gabi, welcome. Great to have you as always. Yao Opong is legal practitioner and a lectures in law at the Central University College. I'm excited to have you the second time on Newsfire. Good to be here. Thank you very much. Now, um, gentlemen, let's see if we are able to deal with uh, some of the matters as, uh, as quick as we can. Um, okay, we'll try and deal with some of the matters as quick as we can and then move on uh, to those that we can say are the most substantive issues to deal with. Um, not to say that the prison break is not an issue that deserves uh, a lot of uh, prominence, uh, you know, and uh, prominent place in the discussion. But it is important that uh, we deal with them briefly and allow the, those who are working at them to continue with what they have to do. Now, the very latest news is that the District Divisional Police Commanders, under whose watch two suspects escaped from the Etiwa prisons, prison cell, is a cell <laughs> in the Ashanti region, have been transferred, that is, as punishment to these divisional commanders. Confirming the transfer, the public relations officer in the region, ASP Mohammed Tanko, said the move is also to serve as a warning to other officers that negligence will not, be, will not go unpunished. Jailbreaks have been grabbing news headlines in recent times as four such incidents have occurred in the last three months only. In the Bosome Frehon district last Sunday, two suspects broke jail after cutting through metal bars. It is suspected that the escapees got external assistance in securing their escape. Bosome Frehu DCE believes a hacksaw was smuggled into the cell to aid the escape. The embarrassing episode has got the police explaining the occurrence to a public that is growing apprehensive about the commitment and professionalism of the police service. I'm reading from myjournalline.com. Ashanti Regional Police Commander DCOP uh, Kofi Bwache has summoned the divisional and district commanders to understand the circumstances leading to their escape. According to the regional PRO, the Police Intelligence and Professional Standards, PIPS, is investigating the conduct of the two police commanders. Um, he is asking the public to understand that security is a shared responsibility and should therefore be uh, forthcoming with information to help rearrest the fugitives. Not too long ago, you heard about Denu. Before Denu, you had heard about the Ashanti region. So what exactly is going on? I'll start with you, Dr. Park. How do you understand these jailbreaks? And they are coming at a time when the Chief Justice has moved into swift action, has empaneled justices of the, Supreme, uh, of the High Court who are touring the entire country and freeing prisoners, particularly remand prisoners, who uh, may have served what they need to serve already for their sins, even though they have not been tried? Well, Samson, first of all, let me say a good morning to my fellow panelists mm. and to say good morning to our listeners and viewers uh, across the country and beyond. Mm. Suffice it to say that uh, this gives room for a lot of worry for several reasons. First of all, it beats my imagination. Uh, that we are having uh, these occurrences in, excuse my language, a much more regular 
reform. Uh, this should not be the case. Everyone understands that you know, law and order and the security of the citizenry uh, continues and has always been a very important uh, responsibility uh, of government. And it's indeed the case that the NDC government uh, has made a lot of significant investments uh, in the area of security and particularly uh, to boost uh, the uh, police force. Is it the case that a lot more can be done? Yes. But we expect that at the very minimum, the officers who have been trained and have sworn oaths and committed themselves to protecting the interests of the people mm. would put up their best effort, yes. And that is why I believe that whilst you know, the investigations are being conducted, um, we need to look at the broader picture of why these occurrences have become a lot more frequent. Is it the case that uh, some of these police officers uh, have not been properly trained and oriented? Is it the case that perhaps the infrastructure in the post uh, perhaps need some upgrading right. and retrofitting? Mm -hmm. Or is it simply the case that they may have been compromised? Uh, because, I mean, as the Akan saying goes, mm -hmm. if you be a man's a woman. And if that is the case, I would hope that the investigators um, would consider all of these uh, factors. But, but something worries me a bit. Mm. This tendency of transferring as a form of punishment, mm. I, I, I truly have a problem with that. Transfer them to where? If people misconduct themselves or they don't live up to their professional standards, they need to be sanctioned. If that means that they should be dismissed, they should be dismissed. Mm. Is it the case that, and excuse my language, mm. and I say this with a lot of pain, that they are being transferred to the northern part of this country. Even before this, I've had several complaints about how uh, persons who are serving in one way or the other in the public and civil service, uh, when they misconduct themselves, rather than facing the full force of the code of conduct or ethics of their profession, they are actually transferred to the northern part of this country. So I am hoping that in this particular case, uh, these uh, persons who have been deemed not to have conducted themselves well, and indeed the Ashanti Regional Police Commander here has uh, initiated their transfer, mm. are not going to be sent to my <laughs> town of Fumbisi or Sandama or Doninga. If they deserve to be punished, they should be punished. And we expect that law enforcement officers in particular would dispense their responsibilities to the good citizens of this country. That is why they are paid by the taxpayers' money. Right. Um, Koku, in, in Denu, seven suspects escaped uh, prisoners or what you call, whatever they, okay, suspects, whatever. They escaped and the police gave a certain warning to those who were in charge. And so they seem to have taken responsibility and managed to recapture some of them. What is difficult for some people to understand is how this is happening around this time and in such succession? Yeah, perhaps that is the problem. The domino pattern, you know, that is what perhaps is making this, uh, give it a certain significance. Mm. Otherwise, throughout our history, we've had such instances. Um, to be honest with you, I do not know those locations in terms of the prisons or the cells. Mm -hmm. We're talking here more of police cells That's than police cells. prison mm. facilities. Prison facilities are a bit more reinforced in terms of their security arrangement. But police stations and their cells are not really fortified. Mm. They don't have the appropriate integrity that they deserve in terms of protection and security. So we should have that at the back of our minds. And in this case, I do not know those particular police stations, where they're located and what they look like. Even in the St. Accra and the regional capital, some of the police stations look really bad in terms of not just accommodation for the personnel, but even the cells and things. So one has to be a bit cautious. We may, if we took an unfilled, mm. on the field investigations and saw the structures, we may then perhaps be able to understand why. If you keep hardened criminals, okay, in structures that are not really security, 
you know, has no security reinforcements, the tendency is for them to run out. So one has to be careful. We need to first find out. I don't know. I'm proceeding on basis of pure ignorance mm. or lack of information. And that's where my difficulty is. But the pattern is not good enough, you know, in terms of the security arrangements we have. We expect the police, in spite of the structural defects or deficiency, to know that once you, you are clear in your mind that, look, this structure has defects, then it means that the human element must be brought to bear on that defect, uh, defect so that you can uh, protect, you know, and rest, uh, secure, rather, secure the place. So one has to be careful. It's easy to generalize. It's easy to adopt sweeping conclusions, mm -hmm. you know, in this situation because of the pattern. It's disturbing. But perhaps, let's look at the structures. And when it comes to that level, then you are talking here of the state. How much has the state been investing in building our police stations and, for that matter, their internal structures? Uh, have we been negligent? Uh, have we been less committed? And I'm talking here not of the government necessarily of today. I'm looking at a broad picture. So if we have put out there certain things we call police stations, <laughs> with, yes, and I deliberately said so, uh, and put what we call cells there, and we go and put hardened criminals out there, uh, we may not be doing too much justice to ourselves as well as to the police personnel on the duty. Beyond this, if specific investigations are conducted <coughs> into those specific incidents and there is any line of liability in terms of you no know, professional misconduct or negligence of duty, <coughs> then that's a different matter. Mm. That, that means that one should not seek refuge in the structural defect of the cell to excuse professional misconduct. I might see here because I don't have the benefit of the full details. Is that the pattern that worries me, you know? Mm. Yeah. Now, hmm. yeah, the, the security, you know, analyst or expert, Dr. Christiani, Dr. Christiani says that he attributes the, th the phenomenon to weak cell structures, unconcerned police, police officers who are simply not concerned. But there are those who say, it's all about police who are not concerned. There are police who are really complicit. Yes, um, good morning. And uh, indeed, I mean, it could be both factors could account for this phenomenon. And uh, because over time, unfortunately, even some police members, members of the police service, have even been involved in the commission of such criminal offenses. So, and I say that if um, good rest, what do I don't do. <laughs> so it is important that we have to investigate these matters. And that's why I associate myself with Dr. Park. Is it not enough to just transfer these persons? That is, if the transfer is being seen as a kind of punishment. So if they are not competent, who should be the, at the receiving end of, of an incompetent public officer? I think that is, is a, a more serious matter. If they have been interdicted, that may have been more acceptable to us. But I would like to even look at um, the consequence or the possible consequence of this matter. The fact that they are in police cells presupposes largely that they are standing trial mm -hmm. or about to be uh, put before court. Maybe there had been identification parade. The accusers have identified them. They may know where they live, mm -hmm. and especially where instances are that they have even stolen police, um, gone to the armory or taken arms from the police. These people who are the complainants or otherwise associated with these cases who may be witnesses against these persons may, may, may be in a situation that we have to really protect them. We should put in place sufficient security measures to ensure that the people don't go and attack them. Because the first they will do is to kill any witness whose um, evidence will be used against them in court. And that is what we have to Look at that's for the conditions in the in the police stations, the cells. We are all aware of it. I think it's one particular area, maybe because of our our previous notion of who a person, an accused person is. This whole word accused is even problematic. Others have used stop using that word. 
If the person is under investigation, that is fine. If he's a defendant in a criminal case, that is fine. And so they will do all they could to avoid this stigma that even when they are acquitted and discharged, nobody wants to associate themselves with, with, with these persons. Mm. And it's not a justification for what has happened. Though. What you said, the, the people in Denu express the same fear when the seven, you know, mm. uh, suspects escaped. Yes. They were afraid that they would come attacking them. Especially the Siwa one. I had mm. um, somebody who is related to that place. And he said that, look, it was even the citizens who arrested these people to the police station. Mm. And now they are on the loose. So we need to quickly move in and try and fortify whatever protection or security that we can, it can yield to their benefit. Otherwise, they will be living in fear. Mm. And these people will do all they could to eliminate them. Gabi, the other can. danger is that they do not only break and leave the place, but they take along weapons. <laughs> well, I think if you're escaping, you want to make sure that you take fire. <laughs> 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 I'm sure weapons can help in that, in that regard. Um, I, I want to take it from another point of view. And I think it's something that we seem to be afraid or shy to confront. We need comprehensive penal reforms in Ghana. There's absolutely no tools about it. You can't even go about sort of picking. Because if you look at it, how come people should even stay in police cells for more than a month? Because why are they there? Police cells is just, you just, it's a holding place, facility, because you're under investigation. And even the whole purpose of being under investigation shouldn't be that the police arrest you and now they are going around fishing for evidence. You know, so under normal circumstances, prisoners shouldn't be at a police cell for more than two weeks under normal circumstances. But the police cells are serving more or less as remand centers. You know, and should that be the case? <coughs> you know, so that, that to me, it's, 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 it's part of the problem. Also part of the problem is the fact that our prisons are choked. Hmm. We don't have enough prisoners, but the calls are quick to jail people for, for stealing a dead goat. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Well, well, it's allowed. Goats do that, um, don't they? Yeah, they do that. Yeah. Surely, yeah. 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 It, it is a natural phenomenon. Uh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> you know, so so you have the situation where people have been placed on remand, and the keys thrown away. It's not been looked at. You, we don't have a system. We need a system where we can look for non-custodial sentences. Yes. We don't have that. Why shouldn't we? And, and this is the 21st century. You know, so I think that, to me, the issue really is about a penal, the whole penal system. It is, it is too archaic. It is, it is against human rights. And, and really, I mean, I'm sure even in, in Switzerland and Sweden, where you are allowed conjugal visits and you are paid money mm. and you have TV and all that. Even there, some prisoners would want to escape. Mm. So how much more here? You know, so, so I think we're not saying that give them any exceptional treatment. But first of all, treat them as human beings. Secondly, make sure that their fundamental rights are respected. Do they have to be on remand for two years? And, and you know, we, we blame the prisons, but I always blame the judge. Because nobody will be on remand without the say-so of a judge. You know, so do we have records? Why should we be, why should the chief of staff be sending judges to prisons? Don't we have records at the court? The chief justice, you mean. The, the chief, chief justice, justice. sorry. Mm. What did I say? You said chief, chief of staff. staff. Chief of staff. <laughs> mm. Yes, yeah, yes. Joe, Joe Debra hasn't sent anyone to prison. <laughs> yeah, I'm, 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 I'm sorry. I was just thinking of how much... The president, though, yeah. is planning his own visit to the prison. Yes. Mm. I think, I think, yes, I had, I had the abortion jan in mind. <laughs> anyway, so, you know, so why, why should the, the chief of chief justice. chief justice be doing that? It is because it appears that the courts themselves don't have records. Because, you know, you remanded this chap six months ago, okay? Or you, don't re you remand them like maybe two months, two weeks, three weeks. Why wouldn't the person be brought back? And the person is brought back or isn't brought back and you don't check?
So you create a problem because we don't keep records properly. You create a problem, and three or five years, you are wondering why someone is in jail the, for six the, years. You, you are familiar with our system. What's, what practically can a judge do when, on the day when a prisoner is supposed to have been brought to, 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 to him or her, yeah. they are not brought? But it gets to a point. I'm just saying... Because that you, case may never be called in any, way, in no, the, in no, any no, case. No, 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 no. You, you are the judge. <coughs> mm. You are the judge. You have to make sure. Because, look, the, the, the liberty of the prisoner is in your hands as a judge. So if the, the prison authorities are not presenting the, the body, you should make sure they do or they free the person. You know, so we, we have allowed the system to abuse the rights of people. And I think, I think really we, what we need is a complete overhaul of the penal system mm. from the way people are remanded. If we need more prisons, we, well, of course, the population is growing. You know, and, and so, so let's build more prisons. Mm. Let's also make sure that people are not jailed for, for things that we can, we can give non-custodial sentences. So me, I, will, I will look at it from, from that point of view. I think the system is, is, is very bad, and it's about time that the government and the judiciary look at it and look at it well and deal with it comprehensively. I was Imagine, reading some uh, research papers and seminar papers uh, mm. done by and stakeholder work done by the CDD, mm -hmm. and I discovered that the discussion on non-custodial uh, sentencing didn't start today. Yeah, but the it, why are we discussing it? Has yeah, actually right. initiated right. it long ago. Why are we discussing yes. it? Taking very concrete steps That's right. and giving timelines for actions to be taken. Yeah. Long ago, I and agree. all of these have been allowed to gather dust yeah. for so, Marco Yongo now to begin to prosecute that agenda with the vigor that he's doing. Certainly, that is the point uh, I wanted to, uh, to make, uh, is that uh, the recent uh, courtesy call by the Prisons Council to His Excellency, um, you indicated earlier on that he had indicated his own uh, interest in visiting some of the, the prisons. Mm -hmm. I think that we've seen enough videos, we've heard a lot uh, of documentaries, and you know, those of you who happen to belong to the legal profession, you can attest to the fact that a lot has to be done. And so I think that uh, this perhaps certainly should be a motivation for the interior minister okay. uh, working with uh, the director general of prisons, Madam Matilda, to hasten the pace of uh, the non-custodial centers. I mean, there's a lot that can be done. I mean, right. if for nothing at all, even cleaning yeah. our gutters and yeah. collecting trash it should serve as a yeah. reasonable uh, deterrent. But I wanted <laughs> to say that in the area of even building more prisons, mm. you, you know that the minister has announced that there's going to be a new prison constructed in Bulga, mm. uh, in, in, my, in my home region. So yes, uh, let's look at all of that. But I think... Is it close to the Bulsa South where you are going to contest as MP? <laughs> oh, well, I think it is going to be in Bulga. Bulsa <laughs> South is in the northeastern, uh, northeastern corner. Okay. And the capital is from BC. Okay. But you know, we, when Gabi was speaking about the need for an, an entire reform in the penal system, um, he forgot to mention the fact that sometimes even... Uh, if you like, those who are supposed to be part of the process contribute, not just the judges. I have several examples, and you know, lawyer Paul knows this. In my days in civil society, I raised a lot of these points where, you know, clerks intentionally withhold or misplace dockets, mm -hmm. compounding the problem. So I agree that if it is going to happen, right. it certainly should be comprehensive. Okay. But, but if you ask me also, I will say that the police is to take the big part of the blame. The police have turned themselves into debt collectors, mm. yeah. turning purely civil matters into criminal cases yeah. and filing very, you know, shambolic, you know, charges against people. And they just go, they get you know, incarcerated and nothing happens. They remain in remand for a long time. Let's hope that the new sentencing guidelines will assist mm -hmm. and also the reawakening of the process in the manner we have seen it may assist in all of this. Nonetheless, those who have no regard for human life and people's property ought to suffer for what they deserve. Not all the prisoners deserve the sympathy that we have on them. Mm -hmm. All right. It's not, it's not sympathy. It's just mm. doing the right thing by the right. book. That's okay. What you're okay. Saying. Thank you. Thank you very much, Gabby. Now, um, we'll take a quick break here. We'll be right back to deal with the other issues that we have. In fact, we'll also go to the IMF to get some cash.